The number one question I get in the Antinet community is how do the addresses work? And so I'm going to give you a really quick rundown. Every single card has an address, which is either in the top right or the top left. Your address is made up of a top level and an idea. The top level categories arbitrarily defined using the academic disciplines. The idea depends on what the other ideas surrounding it are. As I said, this top level is determined by the academic disciplines, though most of it is arbitrary. The only number that's actually determined by the academic disciplines is the first one. 1000 is arts and humanities, 2000 is social sciences, 3000 is natural sciences, 4000 formal sciences, and 5000 applied arts and sciences. Then each one of these subcategories you determine. So if you're writing a card on, let's say, linguistic anthropology, you can determine, you already know social sciences is 2000, and so you can just determine anthropology is 2,800. Why? No reason. It's arbitrary. It doesn't matter. And then linguistic art anthropology can be 2,830. Once again, no particular reason. It's arbitrary. It does not matter. Here is how ideas correlate. You have an idea. You have a new branch and you make an idea. Slash one. That's the first idea in this branch. Good job. Now what if you have a new idea? Then you just increase the number. There you go. Slash two. That's your new idea. Simple enough. But what if you want to expand on this idea? You already have the slash two there. Well, then that's also simple enough. You just add a slash one. There you go. Now this card is expanding on what you wrote about here. So here's how your cards go. You have 4136 slash one, 4136 slash one slash one, and 4136 slash two. And finally, what if you have a variant of idea one? Well, then you do idea and then slash one A. So to recap, if you have an idea, you just add a basic number. If you want to expand on that idea, you add another slash and start with one. If you have a variant of the idea, you add a letter. And if you have a new idea, you go to a completely new number. That's basically all you need to know to get started. But I still receive a lot of questions. And so I've printed some from the Antinet Reddit and I'm going to answer them now. And then I'm going to go through some of the other numbering things that pop up using an Antinet. Here's the first question I'm going to cover. Am I going overboard from Tyler Mangelson? Here you can see Tyler has 1,000, 1,410, 1,411, 1,415, dot one, dot one A, dot one A, dot for selection, and then the actual idea cards. Now, normally I would end the top level category at the first four digits, but that's not actually necessary. You can go further if you want. The answer to this is no, you're not going overboard. You are just building a structure for yourself and making things fit within your own structure. You don't have to strictly follow the academic disciplines. You can move things around, whatever actually makes sense for you. It's your antenna. Here, you have another question. I'm a bit confused about the numbering system. For example, two cards, which are one slash two one three slash one and one slash two one three dot two. Later on, they create another card that would make more sense to have at the beginning or to have the other cards be sub cards of that. And so they're asking, would it make sense to move these three cards to have one slash two one three slash one, one slash two one three slash one slash one, one slash two one three slash one slash two. The answer is no, I would not move these. And I actually want to address a fallacy here. If you have a card that goes one, and then you have another card that goes one slash one, and then one slash two. These cards are not encapsulated within the one. They are just existing next to it. I like to think of my antenna as a full sequence. And so instead of re-encapsulating these, instead of what I would do is I would just keep these the way they are. And I would put this new card that should be before them, before them. So I would go one slash two, one, three dot zero. And you can just place it before your dot one. Now, if you encounter the same thing again, I actually go into negatives. So I just go one slash two, one, three dot minus one. And I would go from there. Very similar thing here. What happens when you're studying a topic and then later realize that the topic can fit into a more general category? How do you go about addressing that larger category so that it encompasses the smaller one? I don't. I don't go about making one encompass the other. I just make sure that the other one go comes before the other in my antenna. Something else you can do if you really don't like the placement of one of your categories and you want to put it somewhere else, don't move any of the cards. Instead, at the start of your old category, make a new card and then in it point to your new address. And so you can just define your new category somewhere else. And then at the start of your old category, point to it so that you can go see where it is. Next question here actually has a few questions. I don't understand the difference between adding a digit to go deeper into a topic and using a dot or slash to branch into it. And so here, 
what I would say is that normally adding a digit to go deeper into a topic is for your top level categories. Adding a slash to branch deeper is once you're actually dealing with ideas. I generally don't use slashes in my actual top level categories. And instead, as soon as there's a slash, now I'm talking about ideas. I also don't get the difference between numbers and alphabets. Alphabets are supposed to be variants of the same idea, but aren't all subtopics a variant of the parent topic by definition? So when do you choose to write 111 and when do you choose to write 11A? Once again, I don't add letters to topics. I only use the letters when referring to ideas. And so in this case, I would always write 111 and not 11A when referring to a topic. When it comes to ideas, these would be referring to completely different ideas. 111 would be referring to the idea that comes after 110, and 11A would be referring to a variant of idea 11. And finally, wouldn't you end up with really long ideas very, IDs very quickly? I've been using my internet for this semester, I'm already at eight plus digit IDs. I imagine after a few years of going down that rabbit hole, I could end up with 20 digit IDs, which would not be fun to write nor reference. Generally, what I would say is just to spend less time in the top level categories. They want, they're meant to be fuzzy categories, which is why I limit my top level categories to only four digits. It's because I want them to remain fuzzy. Okay, now this one actually talks about the golden rule of addresses. Basically, you can break all everything else that I've talked about in this video so far if you're following this specific rule. You should put the card behind what it relates to the closest. It doesn't matter if it's a variant, it doesn't matter if you're just branching down, it doesn't matter if it's a new idea. The golden rule of finding an address for a card is to put it right behind its most similar card. What this specific question is asking about is if you have 1529 slash 1, or then 1529 slash 1A and 1529 slash 2, what happens if you want to file a card between 1529 slash 1 and 1529 slash 1A? As the comment says, they guess that it's probably 1529 slash 1 slash 1, which is exactly what I would do as well. But then they ask, what do you want to do? What, what would you do if you want to file a card between these two right here? I would just do 1529 slash 0 and so on. Okay, there are a few more things I want to cover before I wrap up this video. One is that you are able to come up with your own address schemes. What I mean by this is if you look at a branch collective for in my antenna, you'll see a little square. So you might see 1603, 1603 slash square. The square means it comes before every single other card in the branch. Square is before any other address. It's before numbers, it's before letters. It's the only thing it's behind is nothing. In my sections, it goes 1603, which is the top level card, and 1603 slash square. What I recommend you do is that you start with the basics of just numbers and letters. For a while, you can probably just go with numbers and no letters at all. And then you can introduce letters. And then afterwards, once you have a hang of both of those, then you can start adding your own custom addresses. Another example I want to show you is that in my internet, I have a vocabulary section. And so I have a bunch of dividers in there that have addresses. So 1301 slash m or dot m. By the way, for me, dots and slashes mean the exact same thing as just, and sometimes while I was using my antenna, I preferred a slash and other times I preferred a dot. Currently I'm using slashes. I might go back to dots at some point, but it doesn't matter. And so I have a separator here that reads 1301.m and that's its address in my antenna. And then I have other cards, for example, a definition here, medicaments, that's 1301 slash medicaments. And so it's the word itself that's part of the address. And so if I want to find it, I can go back to the actual vocabulary section and just look up the word itself. That's basically it for addresses. Those are the rules that I outlined will basically allow you to put an address on literally anything. There are other videos where Scott goes, shows you how to actually determine an address based on the academic disciplines. But the rules that I covered at the beginning are all you need to actually start putting addresses on carts. The golden rule of addresses. And this is what allows you to break all of the other rules that I've said so far. This is the only case, if you are following this golden rule, then you should break all the other rules, which is that you want your cards to be as close as possible to the most similar idea in your antenna. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you for watching.